If you're a UCSB student like me, you may have noticed oil rigs off the coast. It probably also seemed weird to you. How could Santa Barbara, one of the most environmentally conscious places and one of the most environmentally conscious states, allow for such an environmentally dangerous, not to mention ugly monument to corporate greed and ecological destruction to exist? If you think this way, I have some good news. The oil rigs are coming down. The city of Santa Barbara has announced that eight of the oil rigs on the Santa Barbara coast are going to be decommissioned in the coming decades. This includes Oil Rig Holly, which is the one that can be seen from UCSB. However, some people have been publicly speaking out against the plan, and it's probably not who you expect. Marine biology researchers at UCSB. They argue that oil rigs have become an artificial ecosystem for many marine organisms. The metal infrastructure of the oil rig serves as a hard body surface, relatively rare in the natural ocean, which certain species thrive on. The rigs also act as an outpost, which naturally rejuvenate fish populations. They also argue these oil rigs support some of the most productive ecosystems in the entire world, and it would be immoral to destroy these ecosystems and kill thousands of organisms. The alternative to a complete removal is called rigs to reefs. The rigs to reef plan in California would be to remove the top side of an oil rig and then dump it into the ocean. Proponents of rigs to reefs argue that this program has already been successful in Texas, Florida, and other parts of the world. It's important to note that this plan would only retain the positive ecological effects the oil rigs have already been having, not enhance the ecosystem any further. However, there are several criticisms of the rigs to reefs approach. Opponents claim this is the solution oil companies want. In most scenarios, they save money compared to a full removal. The way the current law works in California, oil companies can either pay to completely remove the rigs, or they can choose a much cheaper option of rigs to reefs. In this scenario, they would have to pay 80% of what a full removal would have cost them. Another concern is that toxic chemicals might seep from the abandoned metal reef into the ocean. This is disputed. The Minerals Management Service, which is a federal agency, they actually asked that question and they gave us our lab some money and they said basically, go collect fish and then send them to a government lab in Missouri and they will look at them for heavy metal pollution. And they couldn't find any difference in the pollutant load between the same species of fish at platforms and nearby natural sites. Did the lab look at every single pollutant? Nope. Didn't. So, can I speak to every single pollutant? Nope. The main argument opponents use is that instead of limiting liability altogether, this approach would pass liability from the oil companies to the state, and by extent, the taxpayers of California. Despite all this debate, there's only one oil rig here that is likely to be reefed, oil rig Holly. This again comes down to an issue of liability. If a platform is reefed in federal waters, the oil company that is responsible for the platform will retain liability forever. This is a risk for the oil companies, and they'd rather just remove them entirely. Holly is different because it's in state waters, and it is currently owned by the California government, which can do whatever it wants with it. Ultimately, I think supporters of both full decommissioning and rigs of reefs have good arguments, but it can often feel like the two sides are speaking past each other. The essential difference in opinion comes down to two different perspectives within the environmental movement. One is that human involvement is inherently bad for the environment, to be better off left alone. This is a very common sentiment within the environmental movement. This group would say that it is philosophically wrong for humans to intentionally leave debris in the ocean for any reason. The other is a group that says human infrastructure can and should improve things like ecological health and diversity beyond its natural state. On the East Coast, over 13,500 concrete oyster castles have been installed onto the coastline. The result has been a massive recovery of the species in crisis. Similar projects have been done in China and Japan for both environmental and commercial purposes. So, does the idea of coastlines lined with concrete and seas scattered with abandoned oil rigs being able to recover the populations of declining species fill you with hope for the future or existential dread? Whatever your opinion is, as a UCSB student and major stakeholder, I think you should at least be aware of these issues in the context of our oil rig holly.